energy, I want to make a couple of statements. One, I'm not an environmental engineer. Um, uh, neither am I an energy expert um, in that field. Uh, I'm merely an industrial engineer who happened upon this technology uh, about three years ago. And being very entrepreneurial in nature with my partners, uh, we decided to make some investments in it uh, to see if we could make it work, number one, and then bring together the, the scientific minds to justify what we were doing. A couple of things that led to us making this decision without this being our field, at least those of us who are part of the founding group. I had a personal experience back uh, two, three years ago with Hurricane Gustav, who hit uh, the city of New Orleans and Baton Rouge, as well as Hurricane Katrina, which made world news in 2005. And in both those cases, what I saw personally was that the staff of bread and the staff of life, the, the, the frailty of our American existence is, is, is really frail. And without uh, energy, consistent energy, uh, especially those of us here in the United States, um, it's difficult for us to live. Uh, food, uh, subsistence, it's many of the things we're so accustomed to. So my personal experience made me very sensitive to the, the energy issues that are, plague the world at large. Second part of my understanding of what prompted me to convince my partners to invest in this effort. Uh, we're from the petroleum refining industry, so we're inherently aware of uh, the energy issues that face the world at large. And one of the things we realize being from the petrochemical refining world is that uh, our industry is going to eventually go the way of the railroad. And uh, there are many reasons why I say that. The industrial reasons why is we understand there's an emerging capacity in developing countries that, that may put the American refining businesses uh, lead, you know, not leading the pack anymore but actually falling behind. The social reasons why is that we certainly understand that the world is demanding a fossil fuel replacement. So having said that, without uh, science and environmental technology being what me and my partners were involved in, we decided to get involved as bootstrap entrepreneurs make the investment. And uh, we've been involved in this for three years with Hydrify. A couple of things I want to say before I get into to what we're doing. Um, we, we believe our, trans, our uh, technology is transformational uh, to certain industries that would be able to adapt it and integrate it. We believe it's also disruptive on a macroeconomic level. But one thing I, I, I want to make a statement on, it may sound a little bit out of line here, but you'll understand when I finish. We believe and we hope that our technology becomes as boring as pizza. And that may not make sense, but when I finish my talk, you may understand why. So what I'm going to do, I'm not, I'm here to tell you who we are, give you a little bit of overview of what, what we're doing and why we're doing it. Uh, I'm not going to go into the technology deep dive on how we're doing it. If you want to know that, then we welcome you to come to our facility in Atlanta, Georgia. So having said that, I want to start off getting a little bit why we're doing what we're doing. And I want to make a statement that's probably pretty accepted, uh, cliche type statement that's, uh, necessity is the mother of innovation and, and, and having un understood that uh, as we looked at the energy issues at large a couple of things we did in our research three years ago we understood there was a global demand for energy and energy is not abundant uh, a lot of Americans especially don't understand with seven billion people in the world that three billion people have limited access to energy and 1.5 billion have no access to energy which is hard for us as Americans to understand. When I went through my hurricanes experience a couple of years back, I, I, that really hit home to me. Uh, the other thing we understood that the global growth in developing countries will necessitate a 49% increase in energy going to come from how is the world going to meet that demand with, with infrastructure. And if we're going to do it, why not do it cheap? So kind of all those very high level questions became the reason why uh, the founders and I decided to start Hydrify in 2008. So Hydrify's vision was formed out of necessity to meet a felt need in the world. So that's why we did it. Now I want to talk a little about who we are um, and make, make a clear differentiation that we're one of many uh, viable uh, alternative energy technologies. But who Hydrify is in a very uh, clear nutshell is we're a clean energy company that uses proprietary technology to produce what we're calling fionic gases. And these fionic gases are used in a combustion engine, whether it be a reciprocating engine, a diesel engine, gas engine, or a turbine. 
uh, it's used as a fuel additive to produce unprecedented efficiency gains. And the key to what we're doing is we're using infrastructure already there. Uh, we're using the existing engines on trucks, boats, vehicles. And what we're doing is we're balancing the symbiosis between the production of bionic gases and balancing that against the performance of the engine and doing our own tune to our product. So that's who we are. And, it, and it's, an in, it, it's an engineered solution uh, They use the world's most abundant resource, which is water. And um, there's a lot of argument uh, about whether this is possible scientifically, and I will get into that just a little bit. But what we do, we consider our system to be the systematic, intelligent, real-time production of fionic gases from water using current engine designs without violating the OEM warranties or decrease in life cycles. And the key to our product, and this is the very key to, to understand what we're doing, what we're doing is sustainable and it's renewable, but more importantly than that, we're talking about something that's available now, not just in the future. And it's also affordable and scalable. That's kind of what differentiates us from some of the other clean energy technologies that are out there today. So we really believe that for innovation to really make an impact in the energy markets now and into the future, that the innovation we bring to market must be affordable and scalable as well as renewable and sustainable. Um, an example in the news recently, last couple of months of renewable and sustainable energy initiatives really not being good enough for uh, to expand and subsidize it happened in Spain. Spain had to rewrite their entire uh, subsidy laws considering renewable energy. They just couldn't pay for it. The same thing has uh, happened in California. So one of the things that we really believe is that costly energy capacity, it limits the gross growth of a developed country, trying to compete with other countries who don't have the same drivers and issues. Um, we also believe limited energy capacity impedes the progress of developing countries that can never ever get a chance to even compete, much less experience economic prosperity. So our question is if we consider clean energy to be important as the world tries to fill the gap of a 49% increase and also compete with rising crude oil prices, then why not make it clean? And that's where we believe the Hydrofy solution has a niche. So how is Hydrofy affordable? Uh, well, there's two reasons why it's affordable. It's, it is available and it is abundant. And if you could just keep those two words uh, and available now, we make it available to the source and what we're doing the resources are abundant. Uh, the available source means we believe that meeting future energy demands, whether it be clean or whether it be dirty, uh, it doesn't have to require huge investments in infrastructure. If we change the paradigm from having to be a centralized energy source at a plant somewhere into a pipeline, into a, a grid to get to the customer, but make it distributed. The key to our products is that uh, they're onboard vehicles, they're onboard boats, or they're at a home or at a, a residence or at a business. So it is available to, to the source of where the demand for energy is. Uh, it is an abundant resource. The building block of the hydrofy technology uh, is water. Water contains the most explosive substance known to man, hydrogen. It also contains the, the very substance that causes combustion, which is oxygen. And what we've done um, is put them in a, the perfect stoichiometric balance of hydrogen, oxygen, some ozone, their ions, and, and, and gas radicals. And so the important uh, thing to understand is that we're using an abundant resource, but we're also using available old science, which I would call the absolutes. Uh, photocatalysis has been around since the beginning of time. Uh, a lot of the uh, universities like uh, NTU and other ones are actually doing studies and, and reports and saying how they believe that what nature does to create the, the energy from water and, and the life sustenance from, from water uh, is available to be reproduced uh, uh, to make energy. We believe that. Uh, the other old absolute of available science is electrolysis. It's been around for 200 years. So we're using, we're not creating any new science. Uh, we're using science that's been around for a long time, but what we're doing, we're using the abundantly available new science, the advancements. 
the uh, available old science were, were the absolutes. The abundant new science is the advancement. So what I'm talking about is nanomaterials, semiconductor, electronics, dielectric and electromagnetic material science. So there's a lot of advancements that when Faraday's law and many of these other laws that are still taught in, in universities and schools today, uh, we have put the right cocktail mix of the old science and the, the new science together. This is what makes HydroFi solutions scalable. Uh, HydroFi's innovation is not a new idea. It's not a new method. Um, it's a new device designed to be distributed to where the sources are required um, using the old idea is a method of my monologue. Uh, what we're doing is really boring as pizza. It's, it's really nothing new. So being scalable is really important to us as we launch into the marketplace. And there's about four areas that we believe that we're that we're, we're scalable today that possibly wouldn't um, available are, are the truth maybe even as early as five or six years ago. Uh, the awareness today is scalable. What we're doing here today over the internet. Uh, historically, innovative technologies and methods had their genesis and maturity first in developed countries of highly industrialized efforts. Uh, I mentioned uh, that Hydrify's innovation is not a new idea. It's not a new method. It is a new device using old ideas and old methods that are proven. Put them in the right combination to make it available to the public and make it abundant. And that's why my reverence at the beginning of this was that I hope that our technology is really as boring as pizza. Uh, is because uh, and it, it, we're not doing anything new. We're not trying to recreate a new science. We're taking science that was already there and we're making it work in, in an affordable solution. So a couple of things that, that are important to be scalable. As I mentioned, that awareness is scalable. Historically, innovative technologies and methods had their genesis in developed countries, mainly in areas of high industry. And, and they had to be a pretty mature innovation before it got to where there was a real need in your developing countries. That's no longer the case today with the viral media. When awareness is made over the internet, webcast, uh, news releases, press releases, uh, the demand in, in developing countries is immediate. Uh, the other part of Hydrify's solution that's scalable is acceptance. The developed world was driven to acceptance because of a desire for energy efficiency and that's becoming an ever more talked about subject every day uh, with the rising prices of oil, the uncertainty in certain oil producing countries, uh, and compliance measures uh, uh, such as the Kyoto Protocol and of course even more restrictive is what so some certain countries and in our country the United States what some certain states are passing as legislation. Um, the other part of acceptance being scalable and while the timing is right for a technology like ours is the developing world was being driven to acceptance because of a dysfunction of energy poverty. Their mere survival is uh, based upon energy and they don't see economic prosperity until they have an energy supply. Uh, the action that Hydrofy can bring to the marketplace is also scalable. As I told you at the beginning of my talk that me and the founders of Hydrofire, our background was not science and technology. Our background was service engineering. So our core competency was business centric, not research centric. Uh, our background, our affiliate companies, is about manufacturing and service. We have a global reach and we can touch customers through our existing network. Uh, we're entrepreneurially driven, but yet we're scientifically supported. Uh, that's why we moved to Atlanta to take advantage of the skill sets in the great city of Atlanta, Georgia, be close to great universities like Georgia Tech and Clemson, and then be able to glean from their science and glean from their experts. We have a great board of advisors of world-renowned experts from Georgia Tech. So we made it work first, the first two years that uh, the founders and I got involved. And it was kind of like the old oil field analogy, just get it done. And we got it done, made it work. We had a third party validated, and we spent the last year and a half uh, putting the science behind it.